Hey guys, Mr. Inyard here. I want to take you through the end module assessment for grade 6, module 1. Obviously, this is not the real test. This is a practice test, but similar questions as what the modified assessment will be. So take your time. Try to uh, work your way through the problems before I solve them or figure out how I got what I've got. And then hopefully you can make sense of it and then apply that knowledge to your own test. So good luck. So as usual, I'm going to let you pause the video to read it, try and solve it yourself. But I'm going to go ahead and jump in and um, go over what I've highlighted and how to solve this. So if question 16 is 20%, I can draw a diagram like this. So this tape diagram has two meanings within one. The percentage I put on top, the questions I put on the bottom. I split it evenly into five pieces because there are five 20s in 100. So at 20%, I should write question 16 on the bottom. So this block for the percentages is 20, and then this is another 20, another 20, another 20, another 20, and I get to 100%. But for my questions, it's only 16, which means this is 16, and this is 16. So this would be 32, and then I'd be at 48. And when I get finished filling this out, if I add correctly, I'll find out that when 100% of the test is done, 80 questions will be done. So I can check it with basic division. I can write 0.2, which is 20%. That's 2 tenths. Um, and then I'm doing 16, which is where I'm starting, divided by it. So whenever my question or whenever my amount is that percentage and I'm looking for the total, I'm going to take that number and divide by the percentage, and I will get what the total actually is. So when you divide by the decimal, you want to move the decimal. So I'm just going to take it and place it here. So now I have 2. But that means since there was a decimal at the end of this, 16, I'm going to add a decimal to that making it 160. So I really have 160 divided by 2, and that will give me my final answer, which of course is 80. Um, and so I can see that 80 is my total. With this question, it's important to remember that this and this may not be necessary for A, but I am going to use it later. So a volleyball court, remember we're talking three dimensions here. We've got a width and a length, but we also have a depth. It's one foot deep, so don't miss that. Make sure you read carefully every question and really try to stop and think and visualize. So I should be picturing something like this on the ground, right, filled with sand, 52 feet this way, 26 feet this way, and then one foot deep all across. So that's going to be three dimension, uh, which volume, of course, is going to be, we'll see later, length times width times depth so or height. So let's find the... Um, the rate of A, so when we find the rate, we just divide across, so we're just going to do 60 divided by 5, 60 pounds divided by $5 is going to be 12, and that rate now, uh, that's the rate, and our unit is going to be pounds per dollar, okay, so I get 12 pounds per dollar I spend which is pretty good, right? 12 pounds per dollar. So every dollar I spend, I'm getting 12 bucks. And I know that because my bigger value is pounds. My smaller value that I got down to one by dividing by it is dollars. So on this page, you need to remember all the information from the last page. If we want to look for the better value, what is better value in this? Well, I want to spend money and get more pounds. So I knew the one uh, A was 12 pounds uh, per dollar. The other one, B, if you remember, was 150 pounds to $12. So we get 150 pounds to $12. So I just divide across, and you get 12.5 pounds per dollar. Well, I'd rather get 12.5 pounds in a dollar than just 12 pounds. So B is my better value. So this is a pretty loaded question and uh, involves quite a bit of math, but um, some information we need to know I've already put down. We're going to know that 100 pounds is what it takes to fill one cubic foot. So that's what this model represents. If this was one cubic foot, it would be 100 pounds. Now, obviously, the volume of the uh, volleyball court is way more than one cubic 
um, foot because it's going to be 26 times 52 times 1, so really just 26 times 52 cubic feet. Um, and I buy them at either 12 pounds a dollar or 12.5 pounds per dollar. So I need to figure out how much is it going to cost to fill the entire volleyball court with sand. You're going to find this is going to be more than you expect. So here's what you do. First, you find the volume of the court, 26 times 52. So right down here, I did my work, and it's 1,352 cubic feet. All right, then I have to multiply that by 100 because each of these... Each cubic foot is 100 pounds, so that's 1,352 times 100. So that's going to give me 135,200 pounds of sand needed to fill the volleyball court. And remember, this is a full-size volleyball court. This is big, all right? This is very big. So now I can either divide it by 12 and use A, or I can divide it by 12.5 and use B. So when it's all said and done, you can do it by hand or you can just use a calculator. <clears throat> you should be able to use a calculator on this test, I believe. Um, at least I let my kids f for this problem uh, because it's a lot of big math and dividing a six-digit number by a decimal, uh, which is possible, you just move this over and then move uh, that over. It's quite easy, but for time's sake, dividing $10,816 10 is what B will cost. A will cost $11,266.67. Um, so obviously we'd go with B because it's cheaper, but that's still a pretty big cost. Fun problem. So this problem is a little simpler. We simply are finding our connection. These are times 9, so I write that out to the side. These are times 12, so I write that out to the side. Which tells me if I divide across, and I'm going to get 9, right? 18 divided by 2 is 9, that Lauren makes $9 an hour. And 36 divided by 3, which you get that to 1, is $12 an hour. So now I've got a lot of information to continue answering these. So A, you can consider, done. So for B and C, you pretty much already have as well. Julie makes more because 12 is greater than 9, and it's for the same amount of time. So for one hour, I make $12. That's better than one hour at $9. And her rate is 12, right? But the unit is dollars per hour because what we did was we got dollars. Uh, we divided dollars by hours, so hours became 1. And also for D and E, you kind of have this. We know Julie makes $12 an hour, so you take her 16 hours, multiply it by her dollars per hour. So each hour she's making 12. That's going to give her $192. And then the ratio between Lauren and Julie would be 9 to 12. This question seems to throw some people off, but it's actually quite simple. If you make, what they did is they reversed the units, right? Instead of doing dollars per hour, they're doing hours per dollar. So instead of it being 12... Um, dollars All right, so for this question, um, see if you can figure out, maybe pause the video and find out how I got what I got, uh, and then I'll explain it. All right, so if we're going 60 minutes at 40 miles per hour, 60 minutes is one hour, so in one hour at 40 miles per hour, we'll go 40 miles. That just kind of makes sense. 30 minutes is half an hour. So if we're going 70 miles per hour, in half that hour would be half those miles, so 35 miles. So 40 and 35 together is 75 miles. That's the total distance of the trip. Now, it already told us how long. We did 60 minutes and 30 minutes, so that's 90 minutes, hour and a half. So this question was pretty simply division. So if we're going 60 miles per hour for 75 miles, 
we know that the mileage divided by miles per hour will get rid of mileage and give me hours. So I get 1.25, which is one and a quarter. A quarter of an hour is 15 minutes, so one hour plus 15 minutes is 75 minutes, and 75 minutes is less than 90 minutes, so he gets there faster.